Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Kincaid and today I will be breaking down the cost of the 2001 Kawasaki KX250 build. This video was a request from the Moto Garage and I think it's a great idea. I know it's really interesting to see what all actually goes into these builds and what the cost is at the end, especially for an old bike like this and considering the condition I bought it in with a hole in the crankcase, lots of parts missing and the whole bike coming to me in cardboard boxes. So when I build bikes, I keep a really detailed spreadsheet of everything I spend to make sure that I'm coming out on top when I do end up selling these bikes, because for a lot of these builds, I end up riding them a little bit and then selling them. And the goal is always to at least make a little bit of money on the builds. This Kawasaki was a little bit unique because I knew I was just going to go all out on it and it was going to be a fun winter project while I'm recovering from shoulder surgery. So I wasn't as worried about cost as I am on most builds and really just put all of the best parts and equipment I could into it. So with all this said, I have my spreadsheet sorted from most expensive to least expensive. There's about 100 items in the spreadsheet, so it's a pretty extensive list, but I'll start going through it. So if the bike itself and everything that came with it, obviously you guys, if you watched episode one of the build, you saw how I bought this bike. I paid $600 for it, and it did already come with a new crankshaft and piston, which saved me about 400 bucks. Had it not come with that, I probably wouldn't have paid $600 for this bike because I knew how much was going to need to go into it. So moving forward, the next most expensive item on the list was actually that TX Race Restyle Kit. It ships from Spain and the shipping is not free. So that kit is actually $494, which is pretty pricey, obviously, for plastics. It did come with a new seat and obviously you guys see how it turned out. So I'm happy with it, but that was the next most expensive item on the list. After that was the rear wheel coming in at $439 that was built custom by Warp 9 with those anodized purple hubs and nipples and that also came with a brand new rotor and sprocket. And then moving down the list, the cylinder service for Millennium Technologies with that re-sleeve and replate cost $416.95. Obviously that was pretty essential and this bike now has a completely fresh engine as a result of that so that is money well spent. The front wheel was $410, again came with a rotor with those custom purple hubs and nipples. Next on the list was the Pro Circuit Works Pipe for the 2004 KX250. And then that needed a little bit of modification, as you guys know, to fit on the 2001. And I paid my friend Jonah $40 to do the cutting and welding of that pipe. Next up, you know the crankcase had a hole in the bottom of it and I did not replace the crankcase, I had it repaired. So Ironhead Cycle down in Texas repaired the crankcase for me and the cost on that was $200. Next on the list would be the custom graphics from Decal Works which came in at $205. Moving right along, the linkage, shock, and swing arm bearing kit from Pivotworks was $180. I found a used OEM carburetor on eBay for $177 because the bike came with a carburetor from the incorrect year. The Shinko 524-525 tire combo cost $162. Those awesome IMS Pro Series foot pegs cost $96. A set of brand new transmission bearings from Hot Rods was $90. Both front and rear stainless steel brake lines from Driven were $85. It constantly blows me away how much better brakes have gotten. I think brakes are one item on these older bikes that I am constantly trying to get a little more power out of when I compare them to say my current KTM, which has just absurdly great stopping power. So anything I can do to make the brakes better on these old bikes, I do, and those stainless steel lines definitely help over the OEM ones. Next up, the shock rebuild kit from Pivotworks was $80, and the fork rebuild kit from Pivotworks was $67. I spent about $60 on different paints for the shock, the frame, the subframe, and the triple clamps. I spent $55 on prime cleaning wheels, which obviously can't necessarily be considered a cost of the build because I still have those and they can still be used on future projects. And for I'm concerned, those are money well spent. This build is so much nicer than it ever could have been without those. This is also one of Cameron's shirts, two stoked, keep two strokes great. I really like it and it's super soft. If you guys wanna pick one of these up, I will have a referral link in the description so you guys can help me out as well if you choose to support Prime MX. Next up was a body bolt kit from Fast Metric. This was $52. This came with pretty much all the bolts I needed to make everything new on the whole body. For plastics, for triple clamps, the subframe, things like that, that kit came with a lot of great hardware. I got a 520 chain from Primary Drive for $51. All of the miscellaneous Dremel and cleaning wheels I ordered on Amazon were $47. Again, can't necessarily be considered part of the build cost because I have those for future projects but I did buy them to use on this build. Next up is the Fuel Star Petcock kit, which cost me $45. It was just slightly cheaper than OEM. 
There was one power valve component missing and that was the governor guide. So that cost me $40 to find one on eBay. Cannot find OEM power valve parts for the 01KX250 anymore. It is very difficult. If you guys recall, the swing arm that came with the bike was cracked. So I had to find a new one of those on eBay that I picked up for $40. The bike was missing the piece that the clutch rod pushes. I couldn't find one of those alone, so I found one that came with a clutch push rod on eBay. That was another $40. That Topar Racing aluminum case guard was $39. The rear brake on this bike was totally mangled with a lot of jerry-rigged parts, so I had to buy a new rear brake rod assembly, and that was $35. The bike did not have radiator louvers. I'm not 100% sure if that's how you pronounce that, but I bought a set of those OEM for $33. Again, one more cleaning type item that, well, I'll have past the use of this bike, but I bought a big box of Scotch-Brite pads on Amazon for $32. I bought brand new OEM frame guards for $29. One was cracked and they were just super dull and faded and those brand new ones look amazing on the bike. Very happy with that decision. I bought a set of Acherbeast fork guards for $29. I bought some GPI radiator hoses on eBay for $25. I used all new engine bolts once again from Fastmetric and that was $25. A new mud flap from Polysport was $24. A Pro-X carb rebuild kit cost me $24. I mangled the original ignition cover trying to remove paint from it, so I had to buy a new one on eBay. That cost me $23. The rebuild kit did come with a head gasket, but since I used it with the original head while waiting for the fathead racing head, I had to buy a new one that I will use with that fathead head. That was $23. I needed a few miscellaneous case bearings that didn't come in any of my rebuild kits. Those were $22. There were actually a couple miscellaneous power valve components that cost me $22. The chain guide block and the chain slider from a chair beast cost me $21 a piece. The exhaust mount from a 2004 KX250 that I needed for the 2001 because of using that Pro Circuit Works pipe cost me $21. I had four different brake rebuild kits from Pro X, front caliper, front master cylinder, rear caliper, and rear master cylinder, and those were all between $18 and $20. The new OEM exhaust O-rings I purchased were $18, nine a piece. The Pro Taper bar pad I bought was $18. I accidentally ruined one of the crankcase oil seals and had to replace it, so that cost me an extra $17. They did come with the rebuild kit. A set of Tusk rear brake pads cost me $17. A no-toil pre-oiled air filter cost me $17. If you don't use no-toil, I don't know why. In my opinion, it performs just as well as any air filter oil and is so much easier to clean. I was missing the engine mount bolts. Those cost me $16. I needed a new shift needle bearing from the one I ruined and that cost me $13. The rear brake bolt was completely missing, that cost me $13. The OEM idler gear snap rings cost me another $13. The rubber boot for the clutch lever was another $13. I spent $12 on carburetor vent line and another $12 on a set of Pro Taper pillow top grips. The breather hose for the engine was $11. A new spark plug was another $11. There are two rubber dampers that the gas tank sits on, those were another $10. I ordered a Tusk kill switch because the OEM one was broken. That was $10. I spent another $10 on fork oil. I needed the brake line guides for the rear line that go along the swing arm. That cost me another $9. The little plastic front brake line guard cost me another $9, as did the rubber boot that goes over the front brake lever. A primary drive front sprocket was $9, as was a clutch cable. A new throttle cable cost me $8. I was missing the clamp for the air box. The one I had was the wrong size and it would have cut into the boot, so I ordered a new OEM one of those for $8.50. The clutch perch that I had with this bike was not the correct one, so I had to order a new one from Tusk, $7.99. I repacked the silencer with FMF silencer packing for seven bucks. I was missing a gear shift collar that cost me another $7. That rubber boot that goes over the power valve governor connecting the bottom end to the top end cost $7. A Tusk magnetic drain bolt was $7. Would highly recommend a magnetic drain bolt on any bike you ever ride. Some DOT4 brake fluid from Maxima was $7. I got my front brake lever, throttle tube, and clutch lever all from Tusk for about six bucks a piece. I needed a new OEM Kickstarter bolt, which was $5. I needed OEM O-rings that go on the rear brake bolt. Those were $5. Now everything left on the list was $5 or less, so I'm just gonna start walking through the parts. Foot peg springs from Fastway, an exhaust gasket, a rear brake spring for the lever, hose clamps, a water pump gasket, one clutch spring bolt because only one was missing, a little tiny gear shifter spring for inside the engine, a couple washers for the kickstarter mechanism, brand new dampers for the silencer, a new snap ring for the primary gear, a new woodruff key, a new fuel tank vent line, OEM right foot peg spring because that was the one foot peg spring I could find, and that's the end of it. That is everything for the KX250. Oh, one more item not on the bike yet is the Fathead Racing Head, which cost $350.
So if you ignore the supplies that I use, like paints, cleaning wheels, things like that, the total cost of this bike was around $5,500. Now I'm lucky and grateful to have some awesome sponsors for this build, which brought my total cost to about $3,500. So with the support of these awesome companies, I was able to personally save about $2,000 on this build. Now when this bike is totally complete, it is actually going in my living room as a showpiece for a while, although I will probably eventually sell this bike. Now for how nice it is and literally every single component being rebuilt, obviously prices vary around the country, but here in Montana, I know that I can get around $4,000 for this bike. I know that might sound crazy to some people for a 2001 KX250. Just for reference, that 2002 CR125 I built last year sold for $4,000. And to be honest, the build quality on this Kawasaki is even better than that Honda was. So guys, let me know what you think. Is this more or less than you expected out of a build like this? How much would a bike like this be worth to you? I have episode 8 of the KX250 build underway and should be seeing that fathead racing cylinder head here in the mail in the next couple weeks. And then after that, the the complete time-lapse video of the bike will be coming together. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any feedback for the style of this video. First time I've broken down the cost of a bike, but I'm happy to do it for future builds as well. Be sure to check out episode seven of the KX250 build if you haven't already, and I will see you guys soon with a new video.